Welcome back, everybody, to the Northern Steel Podcast for the Tri-Corner episode out of Centennial Extravaganza Spectacular Northern Steel episode 75. Chris Nimia, legendary player of 75. Just one, Dom? Yep. All right, we got Ken Cordes. Ken Cordes. Give it up for Ken. Ken Cordes, more like every r- rigor mortis. Is every time, <laughs> hilarious, <laughs> hilarious. Uh, probably not. He played back in the fifties, so I mean, All right, rest in peace, <laughs> dude. Also, every time we do this, and I have to think, find someone who wore a number. It's like, why has this number not been around in the last sixty years? <laughs> like, no aura. All the players who have worn it, the last latest one is nineteen sixty eight, and that's Ken Cordes. No aura. Ken Cordes. Also, why didn't I do Joe piece. Green? I'm an atheist. Oh. Mean Joe Green, 75. Uh-oh. Fake Steeler fans alert. Woo, woo, woo. 75 Whoa, is what Mean Joe about? Green's number. Oh, only, no. Only the real ones know Ken Cordes over Mean oh, Joe Green. Oh, no. I mean, I'm, yeah, that was, it was all for the bit, actually. I'm not, I'm definitely not embarrassed right now. It was definitely all for the bit. For sure. Oh, you don't know Ken Cordes? Must not be a Yenzer. You know Ken Cordes, the rigor mortis? But kills people That's on the field? That's what they called him. Lays that, him dead. Because he was, because he was s- stiff Hell all yeah, the time. Brother. Hell yeah, brother. Bricked up. <laughs> Hell yeah. It's not June anymore, but hell yeah. <laughs> uh, welcome back to the Northern Show podcast. We're heading into week two of the NFL preseason. Uh, last week, we previewed the game like hours before it uh, was on, and this time it's a day before it's on. What's up? Here we go. The game's tomorrow. Uh, the game was sloppy. It was not like last year's preseason masterclass with Kenny Pickett. Um, not to say that Kenny Pickett's good, because he also has not been playing well this year's preseason. I'll touch on that in just a second, because we touched on it last, last week, even though he's not on the team. But it was sloppy, but albeit there's some... Positive things to look forward to, Chris. Why don't you name some for the people? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, the first thing that really stuck out to me, which uh, I feel like was a big sore spot last season, but play calling on the offense was on point. Now, that might not have trans, you know, translated to what the score was or you know overall scoring and everything, but at the same time. There were so many more disguised looks. There were so many more players just getting open. I think the biggest thing for me was our a big weakness after losing Deontay was not having guys or people with the capability to create that separation. But Arthur Smith and the mastermind himself, you know, created these plays to where you didn't need to be the most shifty guy out there. I saw dudes who were open with 10 yards of separation. And that's just straight play calling. Granted, he did have, you know, maybe one that Dom and I talked about, uh, about what was it, the second and long play where he did a run. and, and Yeah. Which is classic, know. like, well, make sure you pull your hair out because they did that a lot last year. I think they were the team that ran the most on second and long last year. Um, so he, he had to squeak another one in there. But Gross. that was like the only dumb part, like Chris is saying. It was really good. Yeah. Overall, man, I I really enjoyed it. We were getting guys the ball who don't get the ball. And I mean, granted, it's preseason, so I'm not looking way too much into it like I did last year, unfortunately. But if there's anything to like maybe be optimistic about, last year we were flawless in the preseason. Kenny looked like a god, but maybe these struggles early on, we're going to go 17 and 0. So, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know. It was, uh, like Chris said, I think like the biggest takeaway was Arthur Smith's playbook and his play calling. I don't know if you had mentioned this. I was trying to look up uh, other stats and details, Chris, but um, or if you've heard this, but there was three uh, passes over the middle and play action with 20 plus air yards in that game, which matched Matt Canada's entire tenure with the Steelers as offense coordinator. And Arthur Smith has, did that in one preseason game. Yuck. Icky. Yuck indeed. Um, some other players that stood out, Zach Frazier had a really good night, uh, potentially on his way to winning the starting job with Nate Herbig being hurt if he has another good night tomorrow. So good for Zach, good for him. Uh Peyton Wilson. Here's some good things. 
Peyton Wilson had a good night. Uh, people were kind of on the fence about how good his night actually was. But I think the overall consensus was he had a good night. He is fast. He's elusive. But sometimes I mean, he shoots the gap a little too far if you want to find a negative knock on him. But other than that, I mean, he had a couple of tackle for losses. He was all over the field. Um, and he's a rookie, man. Got he, he led the team. Exactly. He led the team in tackles. You know, I, I felt like he, even if he was getting beat, it's like he was he was catching up to guys. He is, he's putting effort into every single play. It's just like those those rookie mistakes are going to be looked at, and he's going to learn from them. The dude works yep. his butt off every single day, so show the man some grace. Justin Fields, um, I thought, had a pretty decent game. He wasn't able to score on the team, but they had a lot, like, again, sloppy, right? Sloppy stuff. Uh, a lot of sacks, a lot of bad line play, a lot of fumbled snaps, too, to be but, exact, between Nate Herbig and Justin Fields. Um, but they were able to move the ball with him, and they thought he looked pretty decent. Yeah. Yeah. Which, obviously, post-game stuff, Herbig had said it was his fault for those muff snaps. Now, granted, if it was or not, you know, just something to work on. Glad it's preseason rather than the regular season. But even though he was 5 for 6, 67 yards, and a pretty solid passer rating, um, I would like to challenge that play on the sideline. I'm pretty sure it's Van oh, Jefferson yeah. uh, because In that bounds. was 100% a catch, which sure. the dude was like, would have been 6 for 6. That, that drive would have put us in the red zone. Classic um, Tomlin, and what a catch you going, so. <laughs> when he Ooh, might as well it. do it in the preseason. <laughs> yeah, sure. seriously. Uh, DeMar but, Leal had a pretty solid game. He got moved to outside linebacker because Marcus Golden mm-hmm. retired swiftly after our podcast news, uh, and yeah. which sucks because I like Marcus Golden. But yeah, me too. Know, enjoy your retirement. Enjoy the uh, sex on the beach, the drink, not the action. Um, unless you're into that thing, you little freak a leak. Uh, Calvin Austin Ooh. had a good game. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. Kevin Austin had a, had a nice one. Um, Van Jefferson had a good game, like you mentioned already. Van Jefferson and Kevin Austin have been having good training cam- training camps, so hopefully they can improve him because they are most likely looking to be the top two receivers after Pickens because we had, and not to go on this tangent right now, but we had talked about Brandon Ayuk last week about how the trades potentially are going back and forth. It's close and close and close. Folks, it's not looking good. And that is just the way it goes. Looks like Brandon Ayuk is not going to come to the Steelers. We don't know that for sure. Don't take my word for it yet. You can still be optimistic if you want to be hopeful. Um, but I feel like he really used the Steelers as leverage to get what he wants. It sounds like uh, as of recent news, I'm talking like 15 minutes ago news on Twitter right now. Uh, it sounds like Brandon Ayuk and the contract deal is like pretty much set in stone. They've they they're giving him thirty million a year. They're giving him what he wants. He's he's there at practice. He wants to be a Niner. His family's there. The only thing they're budging on right now, or they're struggling on, is the final year of that contract. I don't know if um, Ayuk wants a guarantee on it. I don't know if he wants more money in the final year. The Niners have said, "Hey, we've caved and caved and caved and caved from our deal in March to give you this. So just take this deal." But he's not taking the deal. I guess if they still don't come together, there's a chance he could go to Pittsburgh. If I'm Ayuk, not to be long-winded here, I would say, hey, I'm kind of being treated like absolute garbage right now uh, and being twisted around. And, and after I have begged and pleaded, I'm finally getting the money I want, but they're still not giving me my demands. So maybe it'd be a red flag to go somewhere else. But the Niners are a good team. I understand you want to stay. You could win a Super Bowl there. Mm-hmm. I get it. You know, but... It's if you're one of those people who are looking for Ayuk, the news has been exhausting. Every day has been exhausting. I don't care anymore. I don't want to read about it anymore. It's not sounding promising. So turn your attention, folks, to Van Jefferson, to Calvin Austin, to and CD Lamb and CD. Yeah, there we go. There's our next target. (laughs) It's CD Lamb time. That or like DK Metcalf, if they ever want to get rid of him. To I know that was like a rumored way earlier, right? which it's fine. It's fine. Everybody shut up and calm down. If, if I, doesn't come, you know, our coaching staff is very, very confident in our room right now. Granted, you know, these, this is a fresh group of guys, not a lot of guys that have worked together. You know, we got Van Jefferson coming in there. We got uh, Scotty Miller's name who I've been hearing a ton about, you know, it's like, we're all trying to mesh and work together and figure out who's going to be the number two and three guy after George Pickens. But Damn it, do I believe we we and, uh, also we also aren't like super in the know on the offensive script and what that's gonna look like because it's assumed 
Arthur Smith's game plan is going to utilize the tight ends in the middle of the field. I mean, throughout training camp and practice, the middle of the field has been used in general. Oh my gosh, I have gas, I have hiccups. I'm so sorry, listeners. Uh, it's, it's assumed the middle of the field is going to be used with tight ends, with wide receivers, what have you. What if Pat Fryermuth and Darnell Washington are a big part of the receiving game? What if they are? What if they're a way big, especially way bigger than last year? Then if you have Pickens get hurt, maybe Fryermuth is available. Maybe, uh, uh, or, or Fryermuth, not sorry, not available is the right word. Uh, maybe Fryermuth can take over that spot. Maybe Darnell's taking over that spot because they're able to, it's still a good passing option. It's not like Pickens is out and we have Van Jefferson, Calvin Austin. It's like Pickens is out and we have Fryermuth and Darnell and Van Jefferson and Calvin Austin. Maybe it's not the end of the world. Plus, this team's going to be a more running, a running team anyways. Yeah, we got weapons. We have new quarterbacks to establish those weapons. I'm not worried yet. Let's wait until we actually see some regular season games to start panicking on who's the wide receiver two and three combo. But guys are working hard, and they're looking good in this new offense. So I'm excited to see what's to come. No, totally. Um, uh, going back to the game real quick, we talked about some of those uh, good players. Oh, mm-hmm. again, again, we won't, we don't want to be as super pessimistic. One, because it's preseason. Two, because we were pessimistic a lot last year. If you're a listener of the podcast, and that wasn't yep. fun for Chris and I, as you can tell, we like stopped doing the podcast the last six weeks because it wasn't fun to just be so dejected all the time. Yeah, um, it was awful. Yeah, not fun whatsoever. Uh, so I was gonna go back to. Some other players, oh, we said DeMarvin Leal had a better game because he's playing an outside linebacker. Um, some people who I would like to see get better or maybe some like little not as good news, per se. Uh, Troy Fatanu, uh, first, <laughs> first round draft pick, had a rough game. Um, played better as it went on as, as some of the Houston Texans starters went away, but he got absolutely destroyed by D- Daniil Hunter. I know it's Daniil Hunter. He had like almost 20 sacks last year. Um, but he just got absolutely wrecked. And then, to make matters worse, he hurt his knee. So that was pretty sweet. And now he's out for the rest of the preseason. But it's sounding like he's, for sure, the right tackle starter? Question mark, question mark? Yeah. That's what it's sounding like, at least from re- recent reports. So we'll see how that goes when he comes back in, especially against the Falcons, yeah. who I thought would be a great warm-up game. And it's not turning out to be that way. But we'll talk about the Falcons when it's time to talk about the Falcons. Not time yet. Um, no. We also got a uh, little, 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 skipping ahead here. Uh, Oh, I was going to say Cameron Johnson. This isn't a negative thing, but our punter was able to hit some people over. That was pretty sweet. Um, Yeah. uh, But yeah, sloppy stuff. Quez Watkins with the, with the muffed punt. Broderick Jones didn't really play that well. He played it for a long time because they're switching them left to right to left to right. I just got to keep that man at left tackle. Just send Dan Moore down to, down to the brig. Triple A. Sure. Triple yeah. <laughs> A. Uh, you know, that's pretty much a, a lot of like what I caught. It, it, and the rest of the game was just kind of there, if that makes sense. Um, it was a very low scoring affair. Kyle Allen did fine. Riz Plumley didn't get to play my boy JRP, but uh, he did play kickoff returns. So good for him, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Really taking on a Taysom Hill kind of role. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just a sloppy game, right? We talked about that. So now we're moving on to this week, and they're playing the Buffalo Bills. They just had joint practice with them, which I heard went well. Although the things that the Bills killed them on in practice were the, the same things they lost to in the playoffs. Um, tight end coverage over the middle. Uh, but this will be this is going to be an awesome chance to play because it sounds like everyone who is healthy is playing. That's what Tomlin said. So if we're seeing Josh Allen, that means we get to we get to have TJ Cam. Uh, Minka, Patrick Minka. Queen out there for a series to go against the first team offense to see how they do against Josh Allen. I know last year they did really well against Josh Allen and that didn't matter towards Jack Diddley squat in January, but it's still exciting to see. We haven't seen Patrick Queen play yet either. So how's that going to look? How's that going to flow? And then uh, who else is getting the first start, Chris? Also this week. Uh, are we talking from the quarterback position? It's the only position that matters usually. <laughs> <laughs> Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson will be getting his uh, first crack at crack at it. 
Um, looking forward to seeing him and, and how this quarterback competition continues to unfold. I mean, things are heating up, ladies and gentlemen. They really they are. Really are. Uh, I mean, you know, recent grades are being posted and it looks like, you know, both guys are making really solid throws, really just an impact. And I don't know, man, I feel like regardless of who's that week one starter, it's, it's looking pretty. And I think there's going to be a lot of doubters out there being like, Oh, Russell's old. Justin's really not that good. Shut up. All right. We just spent Kenny Pickett who I was as you probably watched in yesterday's game, now that you're listening to it, maybe two days ago, um, dude, dude struggled big time. And I mean, like, I was a huge Kenny believer, but like, God damn, the, the things that I'm seeing, the passes, everything like that, it's just, it feels different. So I'm excited Ugh. to kind of see what these guys can do and, and what this offense can muster up. And yeah, not to talk about people who aren't on the Steelers and not to like bring up old, old wounds. But yeah, man, Kenny did not look good yesterday. Mm-hmm. Holy buckets. He looked really rough. Took like about 1,300 sacks. Uh, threw the ball for like four air yards. Completed like 11 passes or 12 passes for like 50 yards. Uh, pretty pretty abysmal. And then you have people saying here the Steelers are going to end up with a losing record. And I just don't see how that's possible when Russell Wilson and Fields are going to definitely play better than that. Absolutely. Look. Look, we literally had a 10-win season on an offense that could barely squeak out 20 points a week. Yep. Look, we got guys who hopefully can throw like... Heck, I can't remember the last time I saw a two-touchdown... Well, actually, that's that's not true. Mason Rudolph <laughs> when he the played. Goal. But like, <laughs> dude, seriously, we have not had a quarterback with consistent like two to three touchdown game weeks in a long time. What about a quarterback so, to throw 300 yards on a game? I haven't had that in a long time either. I don't even know what that is. I mean, Kenny Pickett did it against the Bills his rookie season. True, yeah. They were down 50 to 2. <laughs> but and he yeah. threw 50 times, but... <laughs> yeah. Oh, geez. So, yeah, I think... Yeah, like you said, we're I think we're in good hands. We'll see how Russ plays. I heard he's been doing good, like you said. Just Phil's been doing good. Uh, yeah. So, we'll see how they go, and I'm excited to watch them play. I'm excited to see the chemistry. Uh, and more of Arthur Smith's game plans. On how they work, yes. uh, you know, how, how, if we can move the ball, I'm hoping to, I, again, it's preseason, right? We're trying to work out the kinks, trying to work out the sloppiness. Hoping to see more scoring on Saturday. Hoping to see a little more True. clean play. Uh, hopefully Brodick plays better. Zach Frazier maybe can earn the starting spot this weekend. Uh, just some more clean play, I think, out of these guys would be really nice. There's a few guys that I'm curious to kind of see play out and, and what they do in the upcoming games, just because I feel like they kind of stood out in last week's game. Not all these guys I'm mentioning were standouts of last week, but uh, yeah. I mean, obviously we have uh, the one-two punch with uh, Najee and Jalen, so that's pretty set, but like, who's going to be our third string guy? I know we lost Anthony McFarlane last year, but we had uh, Dejon Edwards and then Jonathan Ward both rush fairly well for the time that they got. Yep. Um, and even Aaron Sh- uh, Shamp- Shampklin, uh, God, <laughs> yeah. that's a hard name to pronounce. <laughs> it's just yep. like the th- three letters I feel like are hard to go together. So like, <laughs> obviously I think the running back three, I know a lot of people won't really care about it, but that's an interesting battle for me to kind of look after and see what's going to go on. They even have LaMichael uh, Perrine. Uh, so I'm curious to see who's going to come out on top of that. Obviously, that wide receiver two is going to be, in my mind, between Van Jefferson or Calvin Austin. But we have names like Scotty Miller, who's been getting his name brought out a ton through this training camp. Uh, Des Fitzpatrick had a really solid, huge reception. It was the only reception of the game, but it was for 34 yards last week. So, uh, obviously, someone to look at there. Um, and we can't forget I, about Roman, too, even though he's not playing this game. Yeah. Can't forget exactly. about Roman. Exactly. If Roman, I mean, obviously it sucks that he got injured, but like dude was leading in every statistical category throughout training camp. Uh, obviously it's training camp, but like as a rookie, especially when you have like George Pickens out there, it's like good for you for being that guy that you're kind of looking at. So excited to see him out there. Um, and then from a defensive standpoint, I want to see obviously more of our rookies get Mark Robinson off the field and onto a bench <laughs> immediately. <laughs> um Beanie Bishop, uh, Jacoby Wind- Winmon had like a phenomenal game according to PFF. I mean, I thought he did fairly well. He's a guy that I looked at in college, so I'm excited to see him. Jeremiah Moon is making a name for himself. He had a pretty solid game with a sack last week. 
Yep. Um, and, and then just uh, moving on from that, a name that I'm personally excited about that has been getting a lot of first team reps this last week, Corey Trice Jr. I feel like I'm really wanting to obviously pay attention to our offensive schemes because I'm so excited about that and seeing what kind of splash plays we can make. And defense was never really a huge issue for me. Obviously, there are parts that we were weak at in previous years, but I don't know. There's obviously still guys out there who I'm excited to see how they can fit onto this team. And Corey Trice is one of them. Obviously, he had his ACL injury last year. So we are, you know, kind of had that opportunity taken away from us. But heck, if he's getting first team reps and seeing some, you know, solid receivers out there, I'm kind of curious to see when he's going to play next week. And, um, and how he can do because I'm really rooting for the guy. I hope he does really well. Yep, and that's a good roundup, Chris. That's a good roundup of players to look out for. Uh, the game was is on Saturday at 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern. If you're on the uh, East Coast trying to watch the Steelers game, if you're on the West Coast, it's at who God knows when four. I don't know. You guys know how time works. Anyways, we're gonna keep this one short. We're gonna. It's training camp's been going on. I mean, actually, training camp just ended, so I think it'll be normal practice to schedule after this week, uh, leading up into the season. Uh, Chris and I will talk more about the game review next week. I'll try to find some more other segments to talk about. Go in depth about maybe how the team's been doing and and other things. But for now, let's keep it short. Keep it brief. Steelers football's back. We're all excited. We want to watch the game. I hope you enjoyed the listen. Please follow us on all our social media accounts. That is YouTube and uh, Twitter and TikTok and Instagram and uh, uh, Grubhub and StubHub and Ticketmaster and uh, Master Ticket and Master Jedi's and Obi-Wan's dot coms and uh, Jiffy Lube. Nice. You can find us, you can find us all there. <laughs> Chris, do you have any last words for the people? Let's go, Steelers! Whoa, the excitement, the energy, preseason, coming at you fast. Let's go, Steelers. See y'all next week. Deuces. Peace.